You lie in bed with your anime body pillow trying to fall asleep when you're suddenly having an anxiety attack about all the possible ways humanity could go extinct. AI superintelligence could wipe us all out in a few years, one president in a bad mood could cause a nuclear war, and a burst of radiation from deep space could fry the planet in seconds. What if all of that happened right now? Shh, my child, no need to worry. In case any of that happens, we'll just start life on another habitable planet, one that is even better than Earth. And to show you how awesome that could be, let's try a few by swapping those systems with Earth right now. That way, we'll know what life would be like on these planets and which one would be the best to replace Earth. But before we do that, I'll need to explain to you what even makes a planet habitable. Firstly, the star that the planet orbits around needs to live a long life and not blast the planet with flares and, you know, die too fast for life to even evolve. Secondly, the planet has to sit in the right zone, close enough for liquid water to exist, but not so close that it, you know, boils away. This is called the habitable zone. Thirdly, as some of our viewers might have experienced in their dating life, size matters. Because the planet has to be big enough to hold an atmosphere and to keep its core moving, but not so big that gravity crushes anything that lives on it. Fourth, it needs to have a stable atmosphere and magnetic field to protect the surface, with volcanoes and tectonics recycling nutrients around the planet. And finally, it requires the right chemistry and elements along with water, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, sulfur, and so on. Get all of that, and you've got a world that can support life for billions of years. Maybe. So with that out of the way, let's first test out Kepler-22b, the very first planet ever found inside the habitable zone of a sun-like star. This star is about 620 light years away from Earth, and what makes it different from our sun is that it is slightly smaller and cooler and its planet takes 290 days to orbit. That means if you were to live on this planet, you'd be a lot older than you are now, Kyle. So like what, 52? But honestly, you actually look 52 right now. Have you ever used sunscreen or a moisturizer? Gosh. Anyway, Kepler-22b is about 2.1 times the radius of the Earth, which makes it a super Earth. Its mass hasn't been directly measured, so we don't know if it's rocky or more like, say, a mini Neptune. If it's rocky, the surface gravity would be stronger than Earth's. If it's not, it may not even have a solid surface at all. But with this planet, there's an even bigger problem than maybe having no surface. The temperature without an atmosphere is about minus 11 degrees Celsius, which is warmer than Earth's minus 18 degrees Celsius. That's right, Earth's temperature without an atmosphere is minus 18 degrees. But thanks to actually having one, our real average is plus 15 degrees. That's the difference an atmosphere makes and why it's so important for these other potentially habitable planets. However, Kepler-22b would need to have the right atmosphere so liquid water could exist, like on Earth. If it does, the planet is so large there is a chance for vast deep oceans with water stretching hundreds of kilometers deep. If humans moved here, life would become strange. Ecosystems would run on chemistry and heat instead of sunlight, since light wouldn't reach deep into the oceans. For humans, it would be extremely difficult. No continents, potentially, no farmland, no pets like cats and dogs and ferrets, only floating or underwater habitats, and, uh, you know, a lot of omega-3 and fish dinners. But until we know its mass and atmosphere, Kepler-22b remains one of the most mysterious but super important super-Earths. But overall, I think this planet just won't cut it, Kyle. So instead, let's look at some planets that are more like Earth twins, shall we? Starting with Kepler-186f. It was the first Earth-sized planet ever found in the habitable zone of another star. The star is about 580 light years away, but is much cooler and smaller than the Sun. This star is what we would call an M-dwarf, or a red dwarf. What do you mean, so it's just like me? Listen here, you little sh**. I only made my physical entity small to hide the fact that you're 5'6", so let's not talk about length here, shall we? There's a reason why your ex-girlfriend started dating the 6'4 basketball athlete from your high school. Yeah, that's right. Anyway, this planet Kepler-186f is only about 17% bigger than Earth, so gravity would feel just a bit stronger. Nothing too extreme. Life would be comfortable for most people who have no issue moving their own body mass. Unlike you, Kyle. Also, the temperature is about minus 85 degrees Celsius. Yeah, freezing. That means it would need a much thicker greenhouse atmosphere, which is an atmosphere that has gases like water vapor, CO2, and methane to keep the planet warm and to keep the surface water from freezing. This makes it habitable. 
but because Kepler 186F orbits an M dwarf, it may be tidily locked, which means one side is always facing the star. Forever. That would create a permanent day side and a permanent night side, and a narrow twilight zone between them where conditions could be stable enough for life, but if that temperature difference is too large between the sides, uh, lots of winds. Violent winds. And with a year of 129 days, there is hope that the biggest problems for humans would be the extreme cold, rather than the potential tidal locking, which would result in also having no seasons, along with the powerful flares and radiation from the Red Dwarf. But if it has that dense atmosphere, it could protect life and make parts of the surface habitable, just mostly on one side or in the middle. And for us nocturnal folk who can't put their work away at 3 a.m., we'll get a whole side of the planet to ourselves. Because of this, both parts of the planet would evolve radically different life forms. So on one side of the planet, you might have very tan biohacking chads living their best life, while on the other side, you might have pale, scrawny workaholics that look chronically tired and need a daily dose of vitamin D pills just to survive. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. That's just like my life now on Earth. Screw that. Let's forget about that planet, Kyle. I don't want to live that life again. Instead, let's look at TRAPPIST-1e. It's just 39 light years away, orbiting a very small red dwarf star with six sibling planets packed around it. TRAPPIST-1e is almost exactly the same size as our planet, with a radius of 0.92 Earths and a mass of 0.692 Earths. It's rocky and the surface gravity is about 0.82 times that of what we're used to. So it'd be lovely and easy to walk around, hike, run, and we'd have to increase the height of basketball hoops now because even white people could jump high enough to dunk. Except Kyle. The temperature is estimated to be around minus 23 and a half degrees, very close to Earth's minus 18. But because the star is so dim, the planet has to orbit very closely, completing a year in only six days. That likely makes it tidally locked. Earth's life here would need to handle high radiation from frequent stellar flares if the magnetic field weren't insanely strong. But if TRAPPIST-1e did have a strong atmosphere magnetic field, conditions could still allow ecosystems to survive, especially in that twilight zone we talked about before. But the type of life that would evolve here? Well, most of Earth life would just die and then creepy twilight killing machines would rise that use the warm breeze to fly across the skies and pick off humans for meals. We'd have to live inside permanently to avoid the stellar flares and radiation, while also becoming a tunnel living civilization as the surface is dominated by resilient and radiation absorbed hunters. Hypothetically. Maybe. Might have let my fantasy run a bit wild there. A bulk being can only dream of such greatness. Anyway, perhaps we shouldn't move Earth's life to that planet. <laughs> I forgot that I was trying to make you more at ease, not make you worry about yet another extinction event. Let's step it up here and perhaps find planets that orbit better suns so we can have a better life. Introducing Kepler 442b, about 1200 light years away, orbiting a K dwarf. This is not a red dwarf and it's not sunlight. These are orange dwarves. They may actually be the best places to look for life and other habitable planets because these stars, like this one, are smaller and cooler than the sun, but far more stable than red dwarves without all the flares and See, they don't blast planets with constant X-rays or ultraviolet radiation, and they burn steadily for 15 to 45 billion years, giving any biosphere much more time to evolve than Earth ever had. They're also about three times more common than stars like the Sun, which means more chances for habitable planets. Scientists call them the sweet spot stars, abundant, long-lived, stable, and perfect for hosting rocky planets in their habitable zones. So we can, you know, go golfing and stuff, or whatever humans like to do nowadays to escape their terribly boring lives. Could we even golf in Kepler 442b? Well, it has a radius about 1.34 times Earth's and a mass around 2.3 times greater. That means the surface gravity would be about 30% stronger than Earth's. You'd feel heavier, but still be able to move around. Everyone would now have a permanent leg day. Everyone would be thick. Nobody would need BBLs anymore. And if I knew that before, I wouldn't have wasted my money on one and plastic surgery industries would collapse. The temperature here as well, estimated to be around minus two degrees, just below freezing, which is perfectly good compared to the previous planets and warmer than Earth's by a lot. But because the planet is larger and more massive, it may also be more geologically active than Earth, with stronger volcanoes and tectonics to recycle its atmosphere and maintain climate stability. 
That's one reason 442b is often rated as one of the most promising super Earths for life, but also potentially a bit more extreme than we'd like for humans. And goats. Overall, for the many Kyles out there like you, the stronger gravity and slightly colder climate would be challenges, but not impossible. For ecosystems, the long-lived K-Dwarf star could allow life to evolve slowly and steadily, perhaps becoming more complex than anything on Earth given enough time. Mostly because every version of life would have to either be lighter to be able to fly due to the intense gravity, or stronger to be able to walk and climb. Actually, wait, that sounds awesome! Look at me fly, Kyle! Woo! <coughs> My apologies, you're right, this is a serious video, and I'm not uh, 12 anymore. Let's move on, because we're almost at the best habitable planet yet. Because there are more planets orbiting these awesome orange dwarf stars that might have exactly what we need to thrive, Yes, finally, we are at potential super habitable planets. Meet KOY 5715.01, the worst name yet, but it's estimated to be about 1.9 times Earth's radius. If it's rocky, it would most likely have a mass of around 5 to 6 times Earth's, which means surface gravity would be nearly twice as strong. Why? Because gravity depends on both mass and radius. Add more mass without stretching the planet too much, and gravity at the surface rises. Stronger gravity also means more pressure inside, which keeps the insides hotter. That could then drive more volcanoes and more frequent earthquakes than we see on, well, Earth. And it would happen on most of the larger super-Earths, in theory. See, Koi completes an orbit every 190 days at a distance of about 0.6 AU from its star. Earth is about 1 AU away. That puts it comfortably in the habitable zone. But gravity really is a b**** here. Humans and all Earth life would instantly feel the weight. Every step would be exhausting, and long-term survival would need major changes. Way more than the other planets. And like Kepler 442b, plants would likely thrive under the stable orange light from the star. Though they might evolve to use pigments better tuned to the slightly redder spectrum. What does that even mean, you ask? Well, on Earth, plants are green because they use sunlight in a special way, photosynthesis. But if you lived on a planet around an orange star, the light would be more red than what we get from our sun. That means plants there might not be green at all. They could be red, purple, or even black, so they can soak up as much of the red light as possible to make food, which you kinda need to breathe. So, we hope they are more successful than that time I tried to raise funds for my new crypto coin, Gravicoin. It would have been huge if the FTC hadn't immediately filed a lawsuit against me and put me in crippling debt. It always comes from below, I swear, brokies. On Koi, we'd start debt-free, and a stronger gravity would push animals to be shorter and stockier than on Earth, but not in a cool way like before. Way more extreme. For ecosystems, the planet's size means more land and more ocean combined. And if tectonic activity is stronger, the recycling of carbon and nutrients could make this world even more geologically alive than Earth's. So in other words, it would become oxygen rich due to the insane amount of plants, and life would be large in size. Kind of like how Earth was in its past before things like asteroids happened. But this planet is 3000 light years away. Can we not find a potential super habitable planet closer to us? Well, we did! LHS 1140b, one of the closest and most promising super Earths we found, only about 48 light years away. It orbits a red dwarf, but unlike many of the stars smaller than our sun, this one is unusually quiet and stable, making its planets much better candidates for life. LHS has a radius about 1.7 times Earth's and a mass around 6 point times greater, which means surface gravity would be about 1.7 g. Still harsh, but more tolerable than the previous planet. It would also make walking and even standing tiring. And over generations, our bodies would adapt by becoming shorter, stockier, and with even denser bones. Literally dwarfs from Lord of the Rings! Of course, it's also in the habitable zone, but its temperature is about minus 50 degrees. However, recent telescope data suggests it may actually have a thick, nitrogen-rich atmosphere with clouds and even the potential for liquid water oceans on its surface. The massive downside is that it's also known as the eyeball planet, because it might only have a small area of liquid ocean available, meaning limited livable space, higher rents than those $2,000 per month prison cell apartments in New York, and a few world wars over who can live where. Yay!
Which, considering how you couldn't even win a prize at the fair for your ex-girlfriend as you kept missing the targets at that shooting game, means your fate would be hopeless, Kyle. So, since literally no one wants to see you shoot a gun, we might need to find the ultimate Earth superhabitable mega-living rock planet Earth 2.0 from somewhere else. Ah, of course, the absolute best candidate we have so far. Silly me. Kepler-452b. Often called Earth's cousin, or literally Earth 2.0. It was discovered in 2015 and orbits a G-type star, very similar to our Sun. Its year is almost identical to Earth's at about 385 days. The planet is about 1.6 times Earth's radius and likely 5 times more massive. That means surface gravity could be nearly double what we experience on Earth, which I think at this point we will just have to deal with because tiny Earth like ours, with average habitability, seem to be quite hard to come by and detect. The temperature is estimated to be about minus 8 degrees, but here's the catch. Its star is about 20% brighter and older than the Sun. Over time, that extra energy may push Kepler-452b into a runaway greenhouse effect, slowly boiling away oceans and leaving the surface uninhabitable full of despair and agony. So, if Earth life were transported here today, plants would likely thrive in the redder, slightly hotter light. But humans and other animals would face harsh challenges to combat the increased risk of skin cancer from a brighter sun, the breaking of bones from not having billions of years to chill and adapt, because the star will make the system relatively uninhabitable relatively soon, and also the harsh reality of having a heavier atmosphere, which means higher pressure, which means more eyeballs exploding out of skulls, if it were ever to reach that much. You know, maybe. Also, the usual increased volcanoes and earthquakes to make everything feel like a repeat day of the apocalyptic ending on the very Earth we are currently living on. So, you know what? I might not actually have a solution for your extinction event anxiety, Kyle. Sorry. I guess you're just going to have to deal with it. Or perhaps there might be another way to survive. Maybe it's the Milky Way's fault. Yeah, let's instead swap to another galaxy.